Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we will talk about the INFJ, the world's rarest personality. Out of the 16 MBTI personality types, INFJs are believed to be the most rare. Only 1% of the population has an INFJ personality type, making it the most rare of all the types. The INFJ personality type is very, very rare, making up less than 1% of the population, but still leaving a mark on the world. Some INFJs report experiences of a psychic nature, such as getting strong feelings about there being a problem with a loved one and discovering later that they were in a car accident. And you know, this is the sort of thing that other types may scorn and scoff at. And the INFJ themselves does not really understand their intuition at the level that can be verbalized. Now, when I took my first MBTI test, I got the result INFP, but I was torn on the edges of P and J, and I was told by my friends that you were too complex, too weird to be an INFP. I was far too special to be just an INFP. I had to be an INFJ. And this was not the only thing I was told about being an INFJ. First, every description is adamant on always selling the INFJ as the most rare. That's the first sentence, the first headline on every article about the INFJ I've ever read. But second, the INFJ is sold as being psychic, and third, the INFJ is being told to be so unique, so special, that they cannot really function in the normal world. As a result, INFJs are reported to have all these kinds of emotional issues and deep traumas and issues that make it hard for them to be around other people. Now, because of this, the INFJ personality type has become kind of a breeding ground for anyone who is going through issues in life. With INFJs reporting that anyone who has an emotionally expressive or dramatic temperament, like with the Enneagram 4 type, or anyone who overthinks social events and is too obsessed with what other people think, uh, that anyone who is indecisive, that anyone who is uh, quiet, <laughs> that anyone who is uh, like both feeling and thinking, both smart and emotionally aware, uh, that they are the most extroverted, that they are prone to isolation. There is a story being told about the INFJ I'm not, and I'm not sure if I like it. I don't like when people hijack the INFJ personality type and make it seem like it's a breeding ground or a meeting space for empaths and for highly sensitive people, when in fact being highly sensitive goes far beyond being an INFJ. I don't like when the INFJ is painted as more unique or more special than other personality types, when I have met so many special and unique people from all kinds of different personality types. Truly when I meet an ISFJ I'm like, wow, an ISFJ? That's so cool. Wow, you are so weird. You're so different. How how are you how are you like this? And being told that you are because of who you are wired to be moody, to be depressed, to feeling like an outcast, to being an outsider, to struggling to cope with life just because of who you are. Just because of being an INFJ. And to be told that other people won't understand you because of how you think, that other types will scoff at you and laugh at you and that the, the only personality type, the only people that will truly understand you are other INFJs. That's just not true. Sometimes I see this ongoing debate and tug of war between INFJs and ENFPs and INFPs whether feeling and judging or feeling and perceiving makes you more empathic. 
Sometimes INFJs are described to have like this deeper, truer empathy in which they just know how everyone feels and absorb other people's emotions, where other people don't really have empathy and only pretend to or mimic the process of empathy without actually processing it. Here, someone says INFJ personality types are known to be the most empathetic of all personality types. Known? By whom? There is this elitism sometimes clouding the belief that an INFJ is special, and that is that INFJ is the only one capable of authentic or a true way of thinking and being and feeling. But there is no true or wrong way to think or feel, there is no right or wrong way to engage in and to feel empathy. There are just different ways to experience it, but we are all experiencing the same thing. Just as there are different love languages, there are different ways to express empathy and different ways to solve problems. And Jung didn't teach that the INFJ was, way was superior, he taught that it was different. And from an INFP perspective, sure, it's going to be very different. And from an INFJ perspective, it's going to be the norm. Because most of these descriptions, I think a lot of Enneagram type 4s are going to be prone to identifying as INFJs. If you're sensitive or introspective, if you're expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed and temperamental, that makes you likely to identify with the descriptions online of the INFJ personality type. Now the core reason you, a person wants to feel special is of course because they need to, they want to have significance in the world. A special person, a person that feels or wants to feel special is a person that wants to leave or to do something unusual in the world, to leave an impact, to make something happen that goes against the norms and the prevailing ideas of their time, of their society. But the INFJ is not the Enneagram Type 4, and the Enneagram Type 4 is not an INFJ. They can be, but they do not have to be. Now, okay, something I've always been wondering about is, what's the difference between feeling that you are different and actually being different? I mean, objectively, we are all different from one another. I don't want to relativize this too much, but we are all different. Everyone is different, and INFP is different from me, and they will feel different from me. And if they feel too different, they might feel alienated from me. And, uh, obviously, uh, what people mean with different in the scope of an INFJ is that statistic, that 1% of the population, meaning only 1% of the population will relate to having the same nature, the same basic drive as you. But what I learned when I started befriending other INFJs and sharing my experiences with them was that their experiences were very different from mine. The things people post about being an INFJ really depend on their emotional traumas and experiences in life. Now me, I grew up in a house of divorce and I well, became a person that was very prone to compromising my own needs for the sake of others. And I see that in some descriptions of the INFJ. With others I see more an Enneagram 4 description. With some I see a type 5 description. And I see these different ways of talking about being an INFJ. For example, talking about yourself as being too intense, being too cerebri cerebral, being too perceptive, being highly perceptive, being secretive and feeling isolated. And I couldn't really ex relate. Well, sure, parts of my life I could, perhaps. But I couldn't really relate, overall. Still I see people so prone to raising their own emotional experiences and traumas and confusing it with the INFJ personality type. And of course what we all have to learn is that the INFJ represents your nature or your flow type, who you are at your best. Where the Enneagram types all depict traumas and fixations and things that we think that we have to be, that we do not have to be. All INFJs, no matter what their Enneagram type is, are going to have something that keeps them from coming in tune with their INFJ nature. 
from truly being and expressing all of their INFJ traits. Some of their personality will be repressed because they don't know how to express it around other people. Now, even though INFJs are depicted as very rare, they are so, so common online, and the reason for this must be in the four style descriptions available everywhere. Four type, type descriptions that claim that INFJs first have a set of personality traits, soft-spoken but strong opinions, fighting tirelessly for what they believe in, judging but still having messy desks, uh, uh, introverted but still generally very sociable and extroverted at the same time. When you write a four description, what you want is you want to make a person seem like they have all personality traits and you want to write a description with statements that look and feel personally significant even though most of the population of the world would agree with it and relate to it. I see it all the time. People get the personality description and go, wow, that's me. And then they read another one and they go, wow, that's me too. Now the thing we do wrong here is we get mad at these people and we go, you can't relate to both of these descriptions. But yeah, you can because they are just so badly written. And the problem with writing a good personality description is you have to make it portray a person from different angles. An INFJ will be different in different situations, in group situations, in social settings, at home. Depending on their experiences, depending on their traumas and Enneagram types, they will think and feel and act differently. Now, I try to cover a range of different personality traits and I try to show what range a personality type exists in. I tend to talk about what an INFJ will love, what an INFJ needs, what is latent to an INFJ's character. But I am usually very clear on that not all INFJs have developed and learned to access these traits and to express their true nature. I know that there are tons of INFJs out there that don't know that they are INFJs and that try so hard to be something they are not. In the future, I hope to see personality type descriptions popping up online that talk about what an INFJ needs to enter into a positive state of flow and trueness to self. And I want to show how the INFJ is when true to self compared to how they feel and what happens in them when they act outside of their nature or their character. Some of the things written about INFJs, such as needing alone time or becoming unbalanced or putting too much energy into relations and then door slamming and giving up on others, all res represent unhealthy behaviors, unsustainable characteristics, things INFJs might try to do that won't succeed, that will only cause them pain and suffering and struggle in unnecessarily so. Uh, an INFJ that is able to be balanced and true to self, to be relaxed around other people, to be themselves around other people, won't need the same amount of alone time. An INFJ that is able to take their time for privacy and to think and to follow their own path without abiding or adapting too much to other people, will be able to thrive more around other people and an INFJ that is able to express their own needs in relationships to state when they are unhappy and when they don't like something are going to be less prone to door slams. So what I hope for are INFJ descriptions that describe why an INFJ might come to engage in and do these things, why an INFJ might feel special or might struggle to relate to others and what they can do about it. Not INFJ's descriptions that hardwire an INFJ to feel misunderstood, alienated from others, and overly so special and higher up than other personality types. When I first got the INFJ personality description, I felt like I was being awarded with some kind of medal. Like they put a crown on my head. And I didn't like it. I didn't want to feel like that. I know my process, I know what I love, I know what I need, I know what is important to me. And I know that it is not necessarily important to others. And I am true to, and I try to be true to what I want and to what I need. And I try to be myself as much as possible. And uh, I notice when I am the most like myself, 
I am the most like an INFJ. So are most INFJs mistyped? Perhaps we're thinking about the question all wrong. Perhaps there are tons of INFJs out there that act and pretend to be other types. ENFJs, ESFJs, ENFPs, ENTPs, INFPs. Because they don't think they can be themselves around others. And perhaps the only way to become truly an INFJ is to learn about who you are and to learn to tap into yourself and to learn to be yourself. Perhaps you can only know you're an INFJ when you are able to feel balanced, healthy and in flow and in tune with who you are. Perhaps as long as you feel special or damaged or struggling or like you are dealing with some kind of difficulty, you cannot really know yourself, you cannot really know you're an INFJ. And you can't really assert that your way of being is the only way to be an INFJ. So to all of you on the INFJ personality type pages, it's time to stop the witch hunts. It's time to stop asserting the INFJ as being a certain way or thinking in a certain way or having certain emotional traumas. We are not predisposed to anything. We are not the four descriptions online about us. We are not the special unicorns. We are not psychic, at least not more than anyone else. It's time to find who you are without feeling superior to others. It's time to end the INFJ witch hunt.